ओके गुड मॉर्निंग टेन क्लास स्टूडेंट लेट अस गो बैक टू द चैप्टर नेशनलिज्म इन इंडिया एंड लेट मी टेल यू ऑल द लास्ट लाइन व्हिच वी हैड डन द लास्ट एक्सप्लेनेशन व्हिच आई हैड डन दैट इज द इनिशिएशन ऑफ सिविल डिसोबीडियंस वी हैड डन दैट इज गांधी जी हैड गिवन अ लिस्ट एंड अल्टीमेटम ऑफ इलेवन डिमांड्स टू लॉर्ड इरविन एंड ही हैड ऑल्सो सेड दैट इफ दीज डिमांड्स आर नॉट फुलफिल्ड बाय इलेवेंथ ऑफ मार्च दे आर गोइंग टू लॉन्च अ सिविल डिसोबीडियंस मूवमेंट ओके एंड लॉर्ड इरविन वॉज अनविलिंग टू नेगोशिएट सो महात्मा गांधी अलॉन्ग विथ सेवेंटी एट ऑफ इज ट्रस्टेड वॉलंटियर्स ही टुक द ही टुक द डांडी मार्च विच वॉज डांडी मार्च टूवर्ड्स द डांडी टाउन विच वॉज टू फोर्टी माइल्स फ्रॉम from sabarmati ashram he walked for 24 days about 10 kilometers per day on 6 april he reached dandi he manufactured salt by boiling sea water and this initiated the civil disobedience movement now what was the difference between civil disobedience and non cooperation movement was this that this time people not only refused to cooperate but they also broke laws thousands of people all over the country as soon as mahatma gandhi violated the salt law they also manufactured salt demonstrated in front of government factories uh, foreign cloth was boycotted liquor shop was picketed peasants and everybody refused to pay any kind of taxes people even entered into the forest that is the reserve forest to collect fuel wood or to graze their cattle now the government under all these condition it was really terrified and it started following a repressive policy that is it began arresting one leader after the other in the northwest frontier province which is near which is near afghanistan that was a part of india before independence it is the northern western frontiers of pakistan there one person was there he was a very ardent follower of mahatma gandhi and his name was khan abdul gafar khan he was also called as uh, uh, <coughs> frontier gandhi he was also arrested in pakistan that is in northwest frontier province as soon as he was arrested the people got so angry that the crowds they demonstrated on the streets of peshawar everybody had forgotten what is non violence and so on and now even mahatma gandhi was arrested as soon as mahatma gandhi was arrested there was again agitation all over the country in sholapur particularly in sholapur district they the people attacked the police stations the municipal buildings the railway station all which was symbolized british rule government responded by by a brutal repression one by one it started arresting the people okay peaceful satyagrahis were attacked women and children were also uh, were also lathi charged and about more than 1 lakh of people they were arrested they were arrested that means the country was completely under some kind of disturbance and even the government did not know what to do and mahatma gandhi also saw that violence was spreading everywhere it was the the situation had become beyond control so this time mahatma gandhi decided to call off the movement and enter into a pact which was called as gandhi irwin pact okay signed on 5th march 1931 now gandhi irwin pact had two conditions one gandhi ji consented that he is going to participate in the second round table conference which was supposed to be held in london is that clear <coughs> and lord irwin agreed that he is going to release all those political prisoners who were not involved in any kind of violent activity is that clear okay so in december this happened in march in december mahatma gandhi went to london for the conference but then over there he saw that the conference was not at all successful because there a number of representatives from different parties had come hindu mahasabha also muslim league also then congress also then depressed classes association also and he saw that we indians were fighting among ourselves only so he was very badly disheartened and he returned back to india back when he was in india he discovered that the government had followed a series of uh, a series of repressive movement first of all khan abdul gafar khan jawahar lal nehru everybody was in jail secondly congress was declared as illegal okay no activities was allowed still with great apprehension means with great reluctance he again tried to relaunch the civil disobedience movement but this movement finally in the year 1934 it lost its momentum and it came to an end without attaining swaraj 
this is all about civil disobedience movement next we are going to do that how the various groups they interpreted this movement okay just like we had done four groups over there that is uh, in ncm we had done towns we had done peasants and farmers we had done the tribal workers and the plantation workers here also we are going to do five groups one is the rich peasant second is the poor peasant third is the industrialist fourth is the workers and fifth is women is that clear so kindly pay attention how they interpreted interpreted this movement and why they participated and when the second time it was launched why they were uh, either reluctant to participate or they did not participate at all okay <clears throat> now the first group which we are going to do is rich peasants when we talk of rich peasants then we are going to talk of the partidars of gujarat as well as the jats of up who were quite rich they were hard hit by the great economic depression which had come in the year 1929 and they found it very impossible to pay the government's revenue is that clear they were not finding it very easy to pay the revenue and the government on the other hand it refused to reduce the revenue at all and this led to a lot of dis uh, anger among the rich resentment ab among these rich peasants when civil disobedience movement was launched they were willingly they were willingly ready to participate in this in the boycott program also because they thought that for them it was a fight against high revenue and they actively participated and even contributed a, a money also wherever it was required by the congress but when the second time they were deeply disappointed when the movement was called off very suddenly in 1931 and when it was restarted in 1932 33 they refused to participate this is all about rich peasants now the next category about which we are going to talk is the poor peasantry now <coughs> when rich peasants were contributing funds also and when they were willingly participate in the in the civil disobedience movement the poor peasantry were trying to remain aloof why because the poor peasantry they were just not interested as many of them they were small tenants and they found it difficult to pay their rents so they wanted that their rent should be remitted it should be freed but congress was not at all um, willing to raise up this demand of no rent because it felt that it is going to annoy the rich farmers the rich farmers the rich peasants and landlords so congress never took up this demand of demand of the poor peasantry and the poor peasant on the other hand on the other hand remained aloof so the so we can say that the relationship between the poor peasantry and the congress it remained uncertain that is when civil disobedience were launched they were hardly not interested in participating is that clear now next we are going to do about about the business class now during the first world war when a uh, lot of things was required by india to be produced that time the indian traders they had made huge amount of profit and after the war the government started following a very restrictive policy after the war also they were very much keen on expanding their businesses they wanted protections against the imports which was coming they wanted a similar rupee sterling ratio sterling over here means sterling pounds okay similar sterling uh, uh, rupee sterling ratio they even formed two three organizations say for example the indian industrial and commercial congress in 1920 and the federation of indian chamber of commerce and industries that is ficcii in 1927 and uh, there were a number of prominent there were a number of prominent industrialists like, like jd billa and uh, and one more person was there and uh, <coughs> pushottam das thakur das and jd billa they all were there in this and they wanted that is they supported civil disobedience movement because uh, because they were wanting that a civil disobedience movement is if it is successful then it is going to assure them a time when trade and industry is going to flourish so they very much willingly participated in the civil disobedience movement even gave financial assistance because they think they thought that swaraj is going to assure them flourishing trade as well as commerce but after the failure of first round table conference they were very much worried 
and they were apprehensive when the second time the movement was launched and they did not participate plus one more thing was coming up that is in the congress there was one concept which was coming up that is the impact of socialism russian revolution had already taken place and many of the congress leaders particularly nehru and both were highly influenced by socialism and russian revolution so they these industrialists they felt that the impact of socialism is going to disrupt their power disrupt their business so they second time when it was launched they were not interested is that clear okay now we have done three groups that is the first group we had done <coughs> the rich peasants rich farmers the jats and the patidars second we had done <coughs> the Uh, poor peasants the third we had done the business class and now fourth we are going to do the working class okay <clears throat> when we talk about the working class then when the businessmen were, were coming very close to the congress party then the working class was not just interested they did not participate except in one particular region that was nagpur region why because when the industries were coming closer workers stayed aloof and congress on the other hand it was also reluctant to include the workers demand as it felt that the rich that the rich industrialists are contributing money and if they are including if they are going to include the demands of the workers it is going to alienate the rich businessmen so it it never wanted it never wanted to include the demand of the workers except the dock workers they participated and in the chota nagpur in the chota nagpur plateau the people who were working in the tin mines they wore gandhi topi and they participated rest the workers were not interested at all in participating towards this uh, civil disobedience movement is that clear lastly we are going to talk of women <coughs> now <coughs> when we talk of women then in our country women were never given a prominent position yet they actively participated in the civil disobedience movement thousands of women they participated in the protest march they manufactured salt at the call of mahatma gandhi they even picketed foreign cloth and liquor shops also many of them they went to jail also in the urban area it was the women who belonged to the high caste family and in the rural areas it was the women who belonged to the rich peasants household yet however this did not necessarily meant that there was any change in the fundamental conditions of the women because gandhi ji gandhi ji he was convinced that it was the duty of women to look after after home and hearth hearth means chula chauka okay and be good mothers and raise and be good wives also and uh, no doubt they contributed a lot they they participated in the protest march in various kind of activities yet congress was reluctant to allow women to hold any position of authority in their party is that clear so this is all about we have done now let me revise what we had done since the beginning in the first uh, in the first part we had done about the uh, new economic new political and economic condition after the first world war then we had done about satyagraha why it is passive why it is not passive but active then we had done about the rollet satyagraha as well as jallianwala bag tragedy then we started with non cooperation movement that is decision was taken for launching non cooperation movement plus khilafat movement okay then we had done that how the various group they they reacted towards non cooperation movement in this we had discussed about four particular groups the towns and cities then secondly we had done about the countryside then the tribal workers and lastly was the lastly was the um, uh, plantation workers then we had done the third part that is towards civil disobedience movement in this it was decided that how 1931 onwards new kind of condition had started developing two development took place one was the simon commission and the second was the great economic depression which the condition had started developing then it was decided that 1930 19 26 january 1930 uh, 
uh, Independence Day is going to be celebrated, but since it could not generate much fervor, that is why Gandhiji decided to st start the Dandi March, that is to launch civil disobedience movement. Civil disobedience movement we had done, how it proceeded, how it initiated, and how different groups reacted towards it. When we were talking of different groups, we had talked about the five groups, that is the rich peasants, the poor peasants, the business class, the working class, and lastly the women. Okay, that's all for today. By tomorrow, we are going to complete it with this chapter. And then you are going to open your books and we are going to mark this chapter. Is that clear, children? Okay.